All right. So last time, you remember we were talking about stability, right? This property that the system can converge to a solution or diverge from uh, the solution, given the small perturbation of initial conditions. So just to reiterate, the property was, if you have a solution, you change initial conditions a little bit, the solution, new solution from those perturbed initial conditions would either converge towards the solution we had before that, or it would diverge from it. Or it would, for example, never converge, but never diverge, right? Converging would mean stability, in fact, asymptotic stability. Diverging would mean uh, instability, right? Uh, and uh, when you never converge, but also never diverge, that is what we call Lepunov stability or marginal stability. Okay. So those were uh, the ideas that we covered. And in fact, we also understood that for linear systems, all of this is even simpler. You, you only have, uh, you don't need to discuss uh, those trajectories individually. You in fact, you can say that the whole system is either stable or unstable based on its eigenvalues, right? If eigenvalues have strictly negative real parts of the uh, matrix, then such a system is um, stable. And if uh, there is at least one positive uh, real part of an eigenvalue, the system is unstable. This applies to uh, any solution. But in fact, uh, uh, a node for a linear system is usually zero solution, so x equal to zero. So uh, the original definition had was defined for a node. And so here we also talk about a node, which is, in this case, a zero solution, or any assertions in our space of matrix A, but that is, we're going to details. All right, so stability. Now, today we are going to, uh, rather than analyze stability, we're going to use this property, or, or better still, uh, we're going to do something to the linear system to make it stable. So let's look into it. So let's consider two different uh, LTIs uh, as shown on the slide. So the LTI number one, x dot equals to two x. This LTI, we can observe, is unstable. The eigenvalue of this LTI is two. And uh, just in case, you know, you can solve this problem very easily, right? You probably can tell me that the solution to this problem is x equals to constant times e to the power 2c, something like this, no? Uh, you can solve it very, very quickly. But uh, now you are starting to get into this world of eigenvalues. And your stability criteria would be less uh, analysis of the actual solution and more eigenvalues, right? So for systems of the of like this, where you have a scalar x, it's like one equation, one variable. Uh, the eigenvalue is actually the parameter in front of x. Like this, number two is eigenvalue. We already used it last time, but uh, just to reiterate. This is the eigenvalue of the system. Okay. So clearly it is diverging because two is positive. It has to be negative for it to be converging or at least negative or zero for marginal stability, right? Okay. Now look at the equation number two. Here, uh, we cannot say anything about it. The reason we could say something about this one is because it was autonomous. Autonomous means it does not depend on time explicitly, right? So x dot equals to x, it depends only on the state. This one though, depends on u. And uh, u is a function of time, presumably. Uh, at least we don't know what it is. It is some function. And uh, this system, uh, number two, this equation number two, we cannot say if it's going to converge or diverge. 
we cannot even say what kind of nodes it has. But as a linear system, if we just analyze the question of eigenvalues, again, uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about eigenvalues of the system because we don't know what u does to the system. So somehow it is, um, uh, we cannot analyze stability of the system. Right? In fact, this is true. And to analyze stability of the system, we would need to know what u is, what u is. So for example, if we pick u equal to uh, u equal to zero, then we get an unstable equation x dot equals to two x. Okay. But uh, we don't have to pick u equal to zero. For example, we can pick u equal to minus three x. So notice, not a function of time, but instead a function of state. So u equals to minus three x, function of state. And with that, uh, we have, when we substitute this function here, we have 2x plus u is equal to 2x minus 3x, which is equal to minus x. And this is a stable equation. Eigenvalue of x dot equals to minus x is minus 1, right? As the coefficients in front of x. So the system is stable. So in fact, we can use control input u to change stability of the system. That is a key observation, and uh, we're going to use it very often. Uh, we're going to use it very often. Uh, in fact, this is the whole uh, area of our study, uh, how to do exactly that, how to change stability of the system based on um, control input. Okay, let's look into it uh, a little bit more. Um, so the problem of finding control law u that makes uh, a certain solution x uh, star of a dynamical system x dot equals to f of x in u stable. Uh, well, that problem is called stabilizing control problem. Okay. So if you want to uh, pose this kind of, kind of problem, find such u that f of x u is a stable system, x dot equals to f of x u. Well, that is a stabilizing control problem. So uh, we could put, uh, put various types of control problems. Uh, control that does this, control that does that. This is a particular type. As a type where we say we want to be stable, okay? So we don't want to diverge. All right. In practice, this is one of the most common uh, and most typical engineering problems. Uh, just to give you an example of, of where you could try to see this problem in practice. Let's say you have an airplane, like a, a passenger plane, let's say. It goes somewhere, right? it goes somewhere, and uh, uh, you have a trajectory. That is like your uh, certain solution x dot. The trajectory is feasible, of course. Airplanes fly feasible trajectory. And uh, everything is good. Now, uh, something happens, like a small perturbation in the air, or a, you know, like a pocket of less dense air, something like this, and uh, the airplane go goes down a little bit, or just kind of shakes a little bit. At this moment, uh, you have to ask yourself, are you going to be able to go back to the original trajectory or not? Right? Because if you cannot go to the original trajectory after being shaken off it a little bit, what is going to happen? Are you going to diverge? By diverging, I, I mean, do you mean that you're going to like achieve this, like instead of flying horizontally, you're going to fly kind of like sideways and then fall down? Big question, you know, that is a very important practical question for airplanes. It's not a theoretical uh, discussion. So you have to be able to be sure that your airplane, given some initial kick, will still go back to its original orientation and go back along the trajectory. And that is a stabil uh, stabilizing control problem. Uh, designing control that would make sure your airplane will stabilize 
will converge back to the additional trajectory. That is a stabilizing control problem. Of course, here I'm uh, very much oversimplifying because there is so much more detail to this problem than uh, only what I verbalized right now. But uh, the essence of what I said is correct. Um, indeed, for airplanes, for spaceships, uh, for autonomous cars, for all of those um, objects, it is important to be able to uh, deal with initial disturbances and uh, make sure the rest of the solution still goes the way the plant trajectory was trying to project it. So uh, that problem is extremely typical. Okay. So this definition is true both for linear and nonlinear systems. But for linear systems, the, there is a lot more detail of how to do it. So that's, um, especially if we choose specific control laws. This, uh, the choice of U is a, we call a choice of control law. Okay. We will discuss it in just a bit. Yeah. Uh, so for linear systems, there's just a lot more you can do with this, with this um, on so, sort of principled ways uh, than for linear systems. So let's look into it. Okay, so consider an LTI system. X dot equals to AX plus BU. Okay, that is what we saw in the first lecture very often. Uh, is a classical representation of a Linear, linear system. So we can choose control as a linear function of the state x. Okay. And uh, we choose it as u equals to minus kx. Okay. Now uh, let's look into, into terminology of this uh, problem a little bit. First of all, we call k a control gain. Uh, why do we call it control gain? Well, control gain, we call it because it, uh, how should I put it? The, the word gain is not a typical English word, but basically it means, um, like in this, in this sense, it means amplification. Right? So let's say if the signal goes through the gain of two, it means it will be amplified uh, twice, right? It will be twice as big as before. So gain matrix basically means uh, the matrix of coefficients of that can amplify x. Okay. K doesn't have to be, by the way, more than one. So if it is less than one, it would actually uh, sort of make x smaller, right? That is neither here nor there. We still call it control gain, control gain. Okay. Now, next uh, part of terminology. Notice that u is a function of x. That is why we call it a control law rather than uh, simple. Uh, like we can call it simple control, as I put here. That is just a word we use all the time. But we also call it control law. Uh, why law? Well, we want to emphasize that this is a recipe of how to get u. This is not the U itself. U itself depends on not only uh, time, but also on initial conditions. Different initial conditions will leave, lead to different X. And this means uh, effectively the time function U of T will be different. U of T doesn't depend on uh, some predetermined X. It is, it depends on X we are going to actually experience. That is why we say control law to emphasize that it is not predetermined. Uh, before you know initial conditions. Okay. Also, the same would be true about disturbances and everything else. Um, all of it will influence X and hence would influence U. Okay. okay. Now let's apply this control law uh, substituted here. What we get is AX minus bkx. When we get x out of the brackets, we get a minus bkx. This uh, system seven is now autonomous, autonomous, 
Uh, so it only depends on X, doesn't depend on any exogenous input. So it doesn't depend on the U, for example. Uh, so you you became like implicit part of the system. And uh, we call it a closed loop system. Closed loop system. This idea that we call it a closed loop system might uh, sound to you quite strange. Uh, <laughs> like uh, what, what does a uh, loop mean in this sense? So let me just very quickly draw you a small picture that would illustrate why we call it a closed loop system. Often enough, people like to ima uh, imagine control and uh, uh, control and uh, the robot in this way. We say, okay, there is an input to our robot. I uh, mechanism plant. They often say it. This is output. So here is your dynamical system. Okay. Robot, plant, uh, anything. Okay. Now, next, what people like to do is they say, OK, let us uh, pass the output of this um, system, in this case, x, to the input of our controller. So this is a control law. OK, control law here. So we say x is input to our control law. OK. And then next, what they do is they say, OK, and this output of the control law, q, will be input to our dynamical system. So u, right? And you can see this looks like a closed loop, right? The output of the dynamic system goes to the input of the controller. The output of the controller goes to the input of the dynamic system. This uh, somehow justifies the word closed loop. In fact, uh, this uh, control system diagram, those are very popular. And uh, people use them, uh, used to use them all the time. Now they use them slightly less, but it is still very popular. And sometimes it's actually uh, very illustrative. So, there is that, uh, those diagrams, right? And this is why we call this a closed loop system, because effectively, what what this equation seven implies is that we now have one system, which somehow works the same as those two systems. So if you merge them together into one, they would uh, look like this one. Okay, closed loop system. All right, closed loop system. Now, this A minus BK construction is going to be extremely important. We are going to see it until the end of the class uh, and ends of the course. So this is uh, going to be absolutely a cornerstone for everything we are doing. So pay good attention to this guy. A minus BK is very typical. Is um, like uh, just as X dot equals to AX plus BU is going to be used all the time. Uh, this is going to be used all the time in this. All right. Next. Now, we observe uh, the system. Hold on a second. X dot equals to A minus BK X. And we notice that we already have some tools to analyze its uh, stability. Right. We already got this from uh, from previous. We got it from previous uh, uh, lecture. In fact, for the, if real parts of eigenvalues of this matrix are negative, then the system is asymptotically stable. If they're at least non-positive, then we have uh, marginal stability, stability in the sense of Lyapunov. Okay. So what we want to have is A minus BK to have eigenvalues which are strictly negative real parts, that is Lyapunov uh, asymptotic stability, or at least non-positive. Non 
that would give us marginal stability. Okay. Now, uh, one more definition. There is something called Hurwitz matrix, and that is square matrix M, whose eigenvalues are strict, have strictly negative real parts. Okay. That is Hurwitz. And we can denote it as M is a Hurwitz matrix, like in Hurwitz, uh, in, in the set of Hurwitz matrices. The reason I introduce this terminology is because it takes uh, like <laughs> a lot of time to say the real parts of eigenvalues of the matrix should be negative. Okay. It takes time. Uh, much easier is to say that A minus BK should be a good one. Okay. And I'm going to use that uh, from now on uh, very often. A minus BK should be good ones. Okay. Okay. Then you would have asymptotically stable closed loop system. Okay, so not the original A would be stable. Original A is still something, but the closed loop system will be stable. That is what we want to achieve. So you, you go back to our airplane. The airplane itself may behave somehow, but the way its ailerons, etc., behave would uh, make sure it is stabilized. Okay. Here are some examples. So this is the example for a scalar case. Scalar case. So consider a system. X dot equals to AX plus B. Here, uh, we can choose a linear control law, U minus KX. U minus KX. Notice that all of those are scalars now. All of those are scalars now. So when we substitute this control law into the system itself, so we get this, put it here. What we have is A minus BK, that is still a scalar, um, as eigenvalue of the system. Right? So X dot equals to A minus BK. Uh, this is our, uh, this is our uh, system now. The solution to the system looks like X of X of T equals to X zero, so initial condition, times e to the power a minus b k t. Right? Okay, good. Sounds good. This, uh, as of course we already understand, implies that as long as a minus b k is negative, the solution converges to zero, because a minus b k is the eigenvalue. Okay, so as long as it is negative. In this case, it cannot be uh, imaginary because uh, uh, for imaginary eigenvalues, you need to have two. You cannot have one imaginary eigenvalues. They often of, always come in conjugate pairs, uh, in conjugate pairs. So you cannot have one imaginary eigenvalue. Okay. Uh, th 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 These facts uh, are proven uh, separately by considering uh, solutions to polynomials. So that is like, I'm not going, going into this, but uh, uh, eigenvalues cannot come as a single imaginary eigenvalue. Okay. Now, let, how, uh, how do we design control laws? Uh, since we can pick any k, let us choose k in such a way that a minus bk is equal to minus q, where q is a positive number. So then minus q will be a negative eigenvalue, and it will be stable. Okay. Uh, then uh, we can pick k as q plus a divided by b. Okay. This gives us a stable system with uh, eigenvalue of minus q. So you see uh, here we could just come say we want this eigenvalue. Let us choose this k. And uh, how do how do we know that this k gives us this eigenvalue? Well, uh, from this in this case, from very simple equation, a minus bk equals to minus q. Looks simple enough. Looks simple enough. We could just express k out of it and we're done. Right. That was a scalar case. As you can see, extremely simple. 
Now let's consider a multivariable case. So two variables, two variables. That was already closer to what we deal with. This is a little bit similar to a uh, spring damper or to a motor. Uh, of course, their matrices here will be slightly different, but you know. All right, so this this case here, uh, as you can see, eigenvalues of the original matrix A are A11, A22. Uh, someone tell me, how do I know that those two are eigenvalues of the original A matrix? I don't know, I, I just didn't catch the, the like some part of this uh, derivation. That's uh, that was all. I mean, the, I mean, we have this matrix A11, A120, A22. Then mm -hmm. we change it to the matrix A11 minus lambda, A120, A22. Ah, okay, lambda. okay, okay. I see, I see. We have to find the determinant of mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. and we should uh, make it equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And from this equation, you can easily find that lambdas are a one. Okay, okay, great. You just in 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 your head computed the characteristic equation. I understand. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. That's that's quite easy in this case. Okay. 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 Nice. Good, good job. Uh, well done. Uh, it, it, isn't it true? Isn't it true? It is easy in this case because you have to separate it, uh, um, uh, ma monomials, how we call them, like a one one minus lambda, a one two two minus lambda. Yeah. Very good. Very good. But there is an easy way because we just studied in uh, the lecture number two, I believe. We studied that uh, for upper triangle matrices, diagonal elements are eigenvalues. Okay. So if you remember this, you would uh, have it easier. Okay. For a three by three matrix, you would not be able to compute a characteristic polynomial so effortless. It would still be the same polynomial, right? If you compute correctly, if you remember the terminals, it would still dissolve into exactly the same thing. But, but uh, just uh, remember this part for upper term geometries, it would make it easier for you. Okay. All right. So those are eigenvalues of the original matrix. Now, we have a control law here. And this control law, uh, essentially, it says, that u is equal to minus k1 x1 minus k2 x2. Okay. That is essentially what control law says. Okay. Now, uh, when we multiply it by bu, what we're going to have is um, like, we're going to have a matrix where in the upper part of this BU. Uh, so this B0 times U is a, uh, like a vector, two by one, if you want. So in the upper part of this vector, we are going to have this expression. And the lower part, that's going to be zero. So this is uh, how our uh, du will look like after we multiply. Okay. All right. I apologize for belaboring this point, but it is a little bit uh, easy to confuse us over here. So let me just point out. So this is going to be, what is written here is going to be this, right? Now, uh, how do you multiply this with this? Well, there, uh, like the principled way to do it is you could say, okay, let me try to, one second, I'll, I'll just use a different color coding, it will be easy. Okay, so you can uh, do it this way. You take this pink part, and you uh, multiply matrix by vector, you have a new vector, okay? The vector will be in this case, A11, let me even write it out. This will be A11 times X1 plus A22, A12, sorry, times X2. That is the upper part of the matrix, of the matrix, of the vector. And uh, downstairs will be A22 times X2, right? Okay, that is uh, what you're going to have. 
and then you simply add together this and this. <coughs> so add them together. Uh, if you add them together, you get a new vector. And then uh, if you want to represent it as a matrix time, times x vector, you have to just simply express x out and you would have matrix times vector. This is the principled way. That is probably how you should do it as uh, much as possible. Okay. All right. So this is a principled way. Another way is to uh, simply look and that is not principled way and this is not something I recommend, but it is something that I use. <laughs> uh, you can look here. You can notice that uh, the part in front of X1 upstairs is minus BK1. So it, it is going to go upstairs to the X1 cell. The part in front of X2 is minus BK2 X2. So it's going to go upstairs to the X2 cell. Uh, downstairs, everything is zero. So nothing is going to change here. That is uh, how, uh, how I do it. <laughs> but this is not principled, and that is uh, going to lead to mistakes. Uh, you have to double check it, etc. etc. Et okay. All right. So after you uh, take this guy, use this control law, you, the closed loop system would look like this. Okay. <clears throat> you can double check it after the lecture, it would be a good exercise. Okay. What is interesting is that it is still upper triangle. So we can still say that uh, this is eigenvalue and this is eigenvalue. Both of them are eigenvalues. Now, A22, if it is, uh, let's say, positive, and uh, yeah, it, in this case, it would have to be positive again. Coefficients of the, or negative, uh, it cannot be complex. Coefficients of the original matrix are not complex numbers. So A22, has no choice but being either positive or negative, but cannot be complex. It is a real number. So uh, if A22 is uh, positive, then we have unstable system. We cannot change it. It's going to be always unstable. If it is zero, it's going to be at best marginally stable, at best. If it is negative, then we have a chance to stabilize the system asymptotically. So now uh, the other eigenvalue. A11 minus BK1. So let us pick K1 such that A11 minus BK1 is equal to minus Q, where Q is positive now. Well, we do it as before. We get K1 is equal to Q plus A11 divided by B. Okay. And this way, if uh, A22 was uh, negative, we got asymptotic stability. Okay. Uh, so what we have seen here, this we often call a um, like th th this is a pro uh, this is a process of ch choosing control law that uh, allows us to get correct. Uh, get correct uh, eigenvalues of the system, right? Gets, uh, to get correct eigenvalues of the system. Yeah, uh, so this is a process that we are going to use a little bit in practice. This process can be automated, right? So this is the control law design process. And uh, we can do it automatically, automatically. And uh, Essentially, like there would be uh, software that would like uh, packages in MATLAB or Python that would allow you to do uh, uh, the same um, uh, the same work, uh, but without like all those steps. Just automatically, you tell them we want this eigenvalues. Please make them. The system will tell you you need this control games. That would be fine. Yeah. So the name of this uh, technique, uh, and I'm speaking again a little bit simplified, but uh, the name of this technique is pole placement. Pole placement. It is not one technique. There is just a family of pole placement methods, 
essentially what we say, what we mean by pole placement is eigenvalue tuning, okay? But instead of tuning, they use the word placement. Instead of uh, eigenvalue, they use the word pole. The reason they use the word pole uh, would be apparent uh, in the next lecture, I believe. But uh, essentially, it has to do with the fact that uh, for a certain representation of the systems, eigenvalues of this uh, matrix uh, would appear as something that we call poles of a transfer function. Basically, there's like three ways to refer to eigenvalues, at least three ways, maybe four ways to refer to eigenvalues. One way is to say it is eigenvalue, another way poles, we are going to see it next time. Another one is uh, roots of the characteristic polynomial. And then uh, um, another one would be, some, um, would be some, um, here I don't want to, uh, to be incorrect, but so something equivalent for the OD, right? Something equivalent to the OD. So there is quite a few ways to call eigenvalues, uh, and they are all equivalent, right? Roots of the characteristic polynomial are eigenvalues, are poles. Okay. So the technique here is called pole placement. That is uh, what we are going to use quite a bit in the course. In fact, until we study LQR, this is going to be the only way we are going to tune control gains. Okay. Now the question. Okay. The question was uh, how we define Q and K. All right. So uh, now, in this case, we have K1 and K2. Those are two control gains, right? Control gains. So those are two numbers that define control law. Okay. <clears throat> so X1, X2 is a state. Those are just coefficients that multiply the state. And uh, we uh, get our U, so control law, based on how we chose our K1 and K2. Okay. So uh, that is uh, what uh, K1 and K2 are. So it is something like, let me just write it uh, one more time. Okay. K1, X1 plus K2, X2. That is a control law in this case. If we choose K1 and K2 to be equal to, let's say, 1, 1, then the control law would be X1 plus X2. Okay. okay. Now, how do we define Q? Q should be any uh, positive number. Any positive number. Let's say we, I choose Q to be equal to uh, one. Then, uh, ac according to this guy, this uh, statement, K one will be equal to A one one plus one, all divided by B. Uh, and regardless of what a11 and b are, uh, one of the eigenvalues of the system is going to be equal to one, to minus one. Okay. So I, one of the eigenvalues of the system is going to be equal to minus one. In fact, eigenvalues of the system would be in this case, minus one and uh, a22. Two, two. So uh, how do you choose q? Why do you choose one or two or 10 or 20? Well, the bigger Q are, uh, the faster the decay would be. Remember the solution uh, associated with an eigenvalue is X of T is equal to X zero times E exponent, right? Of uh, um, eigenvalue. Oh, let me call it L. I don't know. L is a probably better. Uh, S. Okay. I will just call again value S times T. Okay. So if you have uh, the S to being uh, a negative, small negative number, then decay will be slow. It will still be exponential decay. It will still be uh, convergence to the solution, but it will be slow convergence. If S on the other hand and is a uh, large negative number, then uh, the convergence will be very fast, right? So the magnitude of 
uh, eigenvalue determines uh, how fast convergence would be. The fact that it is negative is a condition for stability. Uh, so Q, you can choose anything. You can choose one, you can choose two, you can choose 100, you can choose 1000. That will be your eigenvalue. The bigger Q is, the faster convergence will be. But the downside is uh, K would also be bigger. K would also be bigger. Uh, why is this is a downside? We will uh, understand hopefully by the end of the course. Uh, but uh, just to give a preview, the problem is that it will multiply errors. So for example, a noise that comes from the sensor or from somewhere else, is going to pass through control gain and will be amplified. Why is this is the case? You don't know because I didn't tell you. <laughs> uh, this will be apparent later. But for now, let's just keep in mind that you can choose Q to be bigger, performance will be better. But at a cost, which we will discuss later. So uh, we have seen so far how to just make sure the system is stable. And we discussed it uh, in this abstract terms, in terms of um, uh, just Lipunov stability. Now, let us come a little bit closer to practical work. And for that, we will use, uh, for that, we will use a new idea. And that is the idea of a trajectory. So let function x of t, x star of t, and the control u of t be a solution to this equation. OK. Equation x dot equals to ax plus bu. What does this mean? Well, it means that x dot star is equal to ax star plus bu star. So when you substitute those uh, x dot x star and u star into this equation, it becomes equality. Right? From an, an equation, it becomes equality. OK. We call x star, a reference input, a reference or a reference input, right? and u star, we call it a feedforward control. Right. Together, you can call them a trajectory. So uh, x star and u star, you can call them a trajectory. OK. But uh, yeah, and also a reference, and, uh, uh, x star is a reference. Okay. And U star is fit forward control. Okay. Why, why such strange names like fit forward? Uh, at some point, if you want, I explain to you, but I think uh, right now, if I keep uh, those tangents, we will distract ourselves from the main goal. So at some later time, if you want, I will explain. It. All right. Now, we want to stabilize this reference trajectory. So we want to stabilize system around uh, the points determined by this equation. That is something new. Uh, that is something new. OK. That is something new. Um, how do we do it? Well, the first step uh, to understand how we can do it is uh, to subtract this equation from the original dynamics equation. Okay. So we have original equation x dot equals to ax plus bu. And we have this equation a, uh, x dot star equals to ax star plus bu star. We find difference between them. And uh, we found difference between them. And then we uh, write it out okay. like this. So far, it looks completely normal. Like there's nothing, uh, I mean, we hardly did anything, right? It's just difference between the derivatives is equal to A times difference between states plus B times difference between U. Okay. Now we define new variables. E, we call it control error, equals to x star minus x, 
and v is equal to u uh, star minus u. Okay. Uh, u v, v in this case we will also call feedback control. <laughs> I apologize. We introduce uh, three terms at least per page. Uh, my apologies. But yeah, uh, we introduce new variables. E equals to x star minus x, and v equals to u star minus u. Then uh, the equation here becomes, uh, let me color code it. So this becomes this. Yeah? And the same way, this becomes this. And finally, this here becomes this. Okay. So the equation somehow in the form became equivalent to what we already saw before. So derivative equals of the state equals to A times state plus B times control. So new variables, but same format. Okay. Let's see what we can do about it. Um, so we call E, again, uh, control error, right? And the, this whole equation we call error dynamics. Error dynamics. So control error, error dynamics. So if this equation of error dynamics is stable, is stable, it would mean that it would converge to zero solution to the node, right? So it, if it is stable, that uh, then any solution would converge to a zero solution, right? Because zero solution exists, and uh, any solution has to converge somewhere, so it has to converge to a zero solution as well. Right? Uh, linear systems don't have uh, local stability; they only have global stability. So it means that uh, for this equation, if it is stable, the control error is going to go to zero. You understand? Control error is always go, going to go to zero because zero is a solution to this equation, and uh, we would have um, we would have the uh, control error going down, down, down to zero. But control error is a difference between uh, a reference trajectory and actual x. So x is going to converge to reference trajectory. So that is where we are going with it. We're trying to make sure that control error goes to zero. So it is stable, therefore goes to zero. And if it is stable and therefore goes to zero, uh, x is going to approach the trajectory. Trajectory itself is not going to change. It's uh, just a function of time, but x is. OK, let's understand how we do it. And then we discuss a little bit more. So we decide that our uh, feedback, uh, feedback control v is equal to minus k e, so minus k times control error. Okay, feedback control equals to k minus uh, k times control error, and we get this closed loop system. It is e dot equals to minus a e minus b k e. Notice we see it second time. We're going to see it way more. Uh, that's why we need to remember this form a minus b k. Okay, and we already know how to, to solve this problem. We choose such gains k that the eigenvalues of this whole matrix will be negative real part. So this whole matrix will be uh, Hurwitz. Okay. All right. And if we did this, we would make sure that E goes to zero. Here in the closed loop system, we can see uh, already that E equal to zero is a solution. As a linear system, it doesn't have local solution, so it has only local stability. It only has global stability. So if uh, the whole system is stable, every solution will approach zero solution. So E would be approaching zero. So X would approach X star. Like this whole uh, Russian doll uh, kind of like a, a argument chain makes us understand that uh, the stabilizing error dynamics, stabilizing error dynamics, closed loop error dynamics, yeah, 
makes it uh, possible for us to match the reference trajectory, to go towards the reference trajectory. Okay, all right. Now, in the original variables, this control law would look like this. What do I mean in the original ref, uh, variables? Well, first of all, v is equal to u, uh, u minus u star, right? So we get here u minus u star. Uh, uh, let me write like this. U minus u star here. And on the right, we have minus k times uh, big k times x minus x star. Okay. Well, uh, this part, this part remains the same. We just transport here. I, uh, yeah, uh, the minus sign and I absorbed it inside the uh, brackets. You can see here it was minus k x minus x star. Here is x star minus x. Okay. And here this part uh, goes to the right hand side. And you have a u, a control law for u. So while you consider error domains, you're actual uh, you're actually controlling the original system, right? Like this original system, you controlled, and your control law looks like this. And this control law will make you approach your solution, your trajectory. Let us appreciate the power of this uh, of this uh, derivation. So as long as you have any linear system of this type, right? Any linear system of this type, and let's assume that your system that you want to control is linear, just for simplicity. Okay. So you have linear systems this type. Then if you can find at least one trajectory that works, so one solution and uh, U that actually makes the solution feasible, as long as you can do that, then uh, stabilizing this trajectory, so making sure that from any initial position, you will approach this trajectory and uh, fly uh, along this trajectory. Well, it is a question of just doing this. Just uh, finding k that is um, making this matrix currents. Imagine if you could do it with a drone, for example, like a quadrotor. You have a trajectory, like let's say you want to film a sport event. You found your like circular trajectory where you fly with your camera. All right. Then uh, you find control uh, the, uh, this fit forward control that actually makes it possible. For that, you usually have specialized software. Um, I'm not saying that this is not a uh, work of art. It is. Uh, but this is a separate course. We're not going to discuss how to do this uh, here. Uh, with one exception, we are going to leave it. But uh, just believe me, there are uh, software packages that help you do it. OK? All right. So you have this trajectory, and you, uh, your drone kind of should fly along this trajectory, filming your stadium. Okay, and then uh, you ask yourself, but what do we do if we uh, somehow uh, de deviate from the trajectory, right? What if we deviate from the trajectory? What if we somehow just uh, tilt a little bit? And uh, you say, okay, this matrix is Hurwitz. Therefore, it's going to go back, approach this trajectory, and fly along it. Wind, anything else? All those disturbances, as long as they are like single one disturbance, not going to do anything. We are going to go back to the trajectory. Can you imagine this? It is uh, al seems almost too good to be true. Okay. This is what mathematics promises us. Of course, it promises us this stuff only for this type of system when certain conditions are met, right? And this is true, and this is true. This is true. Uh, in practice, a lot of this is uh, big assumptions. Uh, that is why control theory is big and has a lot of uh, a lot of instruments to deal with practical problems. But but for now, for today, let's imagine that this is uh, going to be true for your drone. Well, you almost feel like uh, you don't have any problems in life now. <laughs> you you can make any robot go along the trajectory as long as you found this trajectory. Disturbances don't matter, right? Nothing matters. Like wind doesn't matter. Uh, Everything is great. You can, yeah. So 
That sounds very good. Sounds very good. This is a trajectory tracking, and this is why you should uh, definitely understand this, uh, well, like this part. It's practically applicable. OK, all right. Now, one more, one more element, uh, one more element, and that is uh, something we call point-to-point -point control. This is extremely useful for uh, pick and place and other manipulator style works. It's not uh, like the same. OK, so it's very useful for those types. Right. Let us uh, look into it. Let us look into it. So consider the system x uh, x dot equals to ax plus bu. Okay, consider the system. And let's say you have a reference input, which is x star equals to a constant. So rather than a function of time, it is just a constant. And fit forward control is uh, also a constant. What it means is uh, the trajectory we want to have is a trajectory that uh, puts a robot in a certain position. Like, why, why do I say pick and place? Well, imagine that you want to be in this position. Like, you're currently in this position, let's say, and you want to be in this position. Right? This is a whole trajectory, just stationary in a certain pose. Right? It's ready to pick something. OK, good. That means if those two are reference input and fit forward control, that means that um, x star dot is equal to 0, since x star is 0. right? And this has to be satisfied. A x star plus b u star is equal to uh, 0. OK. Now, we can try to find the control law that stabilizes trajectory. We do it exactly the same as before. So nothing changes from the previous slide. But now there is one additional uh, thing we can do. Uh, we can find u star. Um, yeah. Before that, we said u star has to be given to us, right? Like we would had to find it somehow. Don't know how. Right? Here we can easily find u star, and uh, we can find it by solving this equation. Essentially, uh, this is done by least squares. Right? You say that. Um, this is a problem with one variable. Uh, right? We put ax star to the left hand side with a minus sign. And then we pseudo invert matrix B. And that's it. That's it. We pseudo invert matrix B. So, uh, This is a least square problem, as I said. It means that uh, this solution here would be least norm, least residual solution. So this solution would provide you u with the smallest norm out of all u's, which provide you smallest residual to this problem. Residual implies that the, the problem is inconsistent. So if residual is not zero, it means that the, the, uh, this equality does not hold. If the equality does not hold, then your pick and place is not going to work. You're, you're, you're not going to be in this position. It's not a trajectory. So not, like all that we said here is incorrect. If there is a residual to this problem, then we could not uh, talk about point to point control. We could not talk about this being a reference input, and so on and so forth. OK? So. Uh, equation 19 has to have zero residual solution. It has to have zero residual solution. Since it has a, re a zero residual solution, uh, this is it. This is a least residual solution. Uh, also, it happens to be a least norm solution. Right? Uh, so I'm not saying that for any uh, AX and BU, you will be able to find exact solution of this form. I'm saying that. As long as the uh, x equals to a constant and b equals to a constant are, in fact, what they claim to be a reference input and fit for control, then it has to have a zero residual solution. OK. All right. All right. And then equation 20 uh, is, the answer. is the answer. 
a classical example of this is gravity compensation. Let's say you have a robot under its own weight, it tries to fall down. So you, you are asking, how can we put can, a torque in this joint and this joint in some joint here that would al uh, allow it not to fall down? Well, um, everything is static, like the states are static. Uh, you only want a static control law that prevents it from falling down. That is a classic example of the same exact idea. And it would, in fact, have this control law, which would be uh, compensating it for gravity, okay. as long as there's a linear system in some sense. Okay. All right. Any questions? OK. Now, uh, last few slides. I understand that this, uh, <laughs> you probably can read that the, it says uh, slide 11 out of 21, but uh, we're not, we are going, only going to have two more slides or something. So don't worry. We are not going to look at 21 slides. Uh, OK. Last last topic for today, and we are done. New input. That is quite interesting, but quite abstract. So let us try to concentrate. And this at the end of the lecture, difficult to concentrate, but let us try. Um, X dot equals to AX plus BU, right? The same system, again, we consider it. And uh, now let's say control law looks like this. U equals to X star minus X plus U star. Uh, we already saw it. That is a classical uh, uh, control law for following a, a reference trajectory. OK. Now, let us find the closed loop system. So we substitute this control law into this system, and we find x dot equals to ax plus bk times this plus b times u star. Right? You see where it comes from, right? Let me just color code it very quickly. So this com comes from here. This comes from here. And uh, this B multiplies uh, both of them. OK. <clears throat> All right. Now uh, I can sort of uh, take x out of the brackets, like from here and from here. We get uh, x here and a minus bk here, which has to be stable. Remember, we talked about it uh, when we discussed reference. Uh, a minus bk has to be stable. And same is true here. If it is stable, then the system itself is uh, stable. But now we have here. Uh, this whole thing. Right? Okay. okay. Now let's just for simplicity, for simplicity, assume that uh, u star of t is equal to zero. That is just uh, to make it uh, cleaner. Okay. Uh, that's not a necessary assumption, just to make it simple. Then the system would look like this. And what you notice is you have this closed loop matrix here, and you have some kind of BK matrix here, and uh, this reference input, right? Reference input. Well, there was a reason why we called it reference input. Well, X star, in fact, acts as a new input. Before, input was U. Now it is X star, right? So now we, after doing all of this, we still have an input, okay? And it is x star, it is x star. So in fact, uh, we basically create a new system with a new input, and we can do all uh, that we did before, but now with this new system. We could uh, also make a control law for it, we can make a reference trajectory for it, everything. That is, in fact, very typical. And uh, uh, one of the ways we apply it 
is uh, we study how this new system acts on this uh, based on different inputs, right? Uh, for example, we can say how does it react on a sinusoidal input? How does it react on a step input? Step is a function that look. Um, let me put it short. Step is a function that looks roughly speaking like this. So there's zero, 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 and then one after a certain point in, point in time. How does it react to other uh, inputs? Why is it important? Well, we need to know if any of those inputs cause strange or uh, undesired behavior of the system, right? So it's um, it, it is important to study. Okay. Uh, more on this, we would hear in two lectures. Uh, in two lectures, we would know more about what exactly it means to study how a system reacts to inputs. Okay, uh, but uh, for now, suffice to say that uh, this is the way we replaced original input u with a new input x star. Okay, so when we talk about how a system reacts to inputs. We don't always think about u necessarily. We sometimes x, uh, think about x star, so a reference trajectory. Just keep it in mind. Um, 